Alright, today I'm gonna be teaching you how to make a, a, a holiday peppermint cake. Now the first two ingredients you're gonna need is of course your baking uh, container and some uh, all-purpose flour. Now baking isn't really a science, so really you just add as much as you need until you feel like you've added enough. So, you know, I'm just gonna add a couple scoops of the flour. It's a small container, so you don't wanna add too much. All right, after that, you're gonna wanna add some sugar. Now, you don't wanna add too much, and believe it or not, flour is more flavorful than most spices. So I'm only gonna be adding a little bit. That's probably a plenty. Egg. Now remember, always leave the shell in for extra protein and calcium. Any baker knows this. Well, I have fucked up an egg. G genuinely can't get it out of the carton, so I'm just gonna scoop that bitch in there. I'm just gonna get as much out of there as possible. Um, th this egg got some collateral, so we'll just throw that in there too. Alright, now that I got the flour and eggs, the only real ingredient needed is some milk. Now, uh, this milk expired a few days ago, but, uh, you know, that's probably not a big deal. And I'll be fucked if I'm going to the store to buy more. Now, you only want to add a little bit. Otherwise, the cake is not going to bake at all. It'll just be basically watery milk. It'll just be goopy milk, essentially. So yeah, that's probably a good amount. Almost forgot about butter. You're going to want roughly one tablespoon. I think that's about what this is. That'll make sure the cake stays nice and rich, whatever that means. Alright, and I did say this was going to be a peppermint cake. The best way to accomplish that is to just get some peppermint candies and crush them up and add them into the batter. Slight problem, I don't have any. So instead of a peppermint cake, I'll just skip the mint and it'll make it a pepper cake. Tastes basically the same. It'll be just as good. And you really just want to go until you feel like you've peppered it up just the right amount. Which, I'd say, we're getting pretty close to that. Looks good to me. There is one final ingredient that you need before you put this thing in the oven, and that's gonna be salt. I know cakes are supposed to be sweet, but adding a little bit of salt will really bring out the flavor. So, now that I've got all the ingredients, I've just gotta mix it up. Now a very important detail is that you do not want to over mix. Otherwise, it won't be fluffy anymore like you want it to be. It'll just be one like like a congealed mess it'll it'll be it won't be spongy it'll just be well, i don't know the proper term for it but it'll, it'll it'll be bad bad and the last thing you want is for your cake to be bad all right so i want to be honest this uh, is a little more milky and watery than it should be so I'm just gonna add a little more flour to make sure it you know, is a cake and not a soup. All right, that's looking good. Uh, now to put it in the oven. All right, I will admit I have been known to burn things in the past. So just to be safe, I'm not going to uh, cook it at too, too high of a temperature. Gonna keep it nice and low, low and slow. That's what they say, maybe. All right, now that the oven's preheated, I'm just going to throw it in. <laughs> and 
and uh, I'll leave it in there for about 30 minutes and we can check on the progress then. All right, it's been about 30 minutes, so let's take a look. Oh boy, that looks really fucking bad. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm gonna turn up the temperature a bit. And I'll come back in like 10 minutes. All right, it's been another 15-ish minutes. Let's take a look. All right, looking pretty good. All right, so to test if something like this is done, you would want to stick a toothpick in it and make sure it comes out clean. Uh, I don't have a toothpick, so... Yeah, seems done to me. And that's how you make a Christmas peppermint... No, pe pepper cake. Uh, thanks for 